The theme of the panel was really trying to think of what's the causes of some of Congress's current dysfunctions and in thinking about solutions, um, how, uh, how to adapt to the pressures and reality on Congress in ways that might have some meaningful impact. Um, so there was uh, at the first a discussion of many of the uh, political pressures and other factors that lead uh, Congress to become more individualized, to lead to broad delegations, that lead to the problems with appropriations and funding. Um, uh, and the discussion of uh, the critical factor of the partisan polarization in the country today with the parties becoming much more ideologically opposed and ideologically cohesive and how that impacts Congress. Um, I spoke about how uh, broad delegations are constitutional uh, but have consequences and um, how we should think about those consequences uh, and the impact they have in terms of polarization but also the kinds of constitutional obligations they impose on Congress. Um, Naomi Rao spoke about uh, the concerns that broad delegations uh, have in terms of fostering more individual uh, lawmaking by members of Congress and emphasized the constitutional, in her view, the constitutional uh, commitment to collective lawmaking. And then David Mayhew spoke about the, uh, tr the status and standing of Congress in popular mind um, and uh, focused in on two uh, modern developments, uh, the filibuster in terms of its active deployment and the Hassert rule that had really moved us to a system of requiring 60 votes uh, for passage of the legislation and the harmful effects those have had. I think that uh, uh, Mayhew is absolutely right about the impact of the filibuster um, and the Hassert rule and holds. Um, uh, and you know, there's a very interesting, uh, if you trace it historically, right, so political scientists used to wish that we had more ideologically divided parties, right? Well, we have those now. Um, uh, and unfortunately, having those now doesn't also function so well when you also have divided government. Um, and then adding onto it the institutional problems created by the filibuster or holds um, or the Hassert rule uh, really exacerbate the problem and, and prevent Congress from being uh, a, a check in terms of one of the checks and balances going on in, in the scheme of government. Um, uh, so I think that's an, an, an important theme. Um, uh, I think that the, you know, coming to terms with what polarization means um, and how that interplays with our governing structures also uh, is, is a critical uh, undertaking, and then also thinking about how how do we implement a, a constitutional structure for government in the world in which we live, um, and uh, not harking back, in my view, not harking back to uh, the way we, we think it was originally meant to be. I, I disagree with the un originalist understandings um, and sometimes advocated about uh, delegations being unconstitutional and other modern developments as being out of, out of whack with our constitutional structure. But certainly it's important to think about what follows from those delegations and how Congress can perform its constitutional function in the world of broadly delegated authority with an executive that therefore necessarily ends up with um, broader power. And given polarization, um, an inability of Congress to check it, the executive as well through legislation.